Hello and welcome again. The IBESS exam for May 2021 scheduled to happen on Tuesday the 11th of May. Paper 1 happening in the afternoon. Paper 1 involves some short answer questions involving data presented in graphs, tables, charts and it does require a knowledge of your entire syllabus content, the ESS guide. Then after a night's rest, the next morning you are scheduled to do the all-important paper 2, which is two hours long. It begins in section A with a case study, which involves uh, data presented in a resource booklet. Not all of your answers to your questions will be derived from the data booklet. In fact, very few answers would be derived directly from the data booklet and the majority of them would use content presented in the booklet and ask the candidates, the students, to apply the knowledge of the ESS guide to a specific context. And that would constitute section A of paper 2. In section B, you would be required to do two essay questions out of four. These essay questions are made up of distinct parts A, B, and C. And in part C, of course, there's a specific marking system that is a little different from the rest of the ESS marking where students are scored by mark band. To get a review of all of this I would like you to click on my previous tips by accessing the cards above this video or clicking on the links in the caption here on YouTube just below this video. Now the main purpose of this video today though is not to go into any more tips for the exam itself because in 2021 many candidates have taken the route of not sitting for the exam and right now as this video is being published today at the end of March still many candidates are in the process of putting together their final IAs to submit to their teachers so what I'm going to do with this video today is to share an exemplar now as I share this exemplar I want to make it very clear that this exemplar is not intended for candidates to come here and to copy everything that's on this and to submit it to your teacher claiming that you have done this IA. If you would like to utilize this in some way and let it serve as an inspiration to modify and to do something along similar lines, by all means you can do that because that is in fact the nature of science but it is academically dishonest it is pure plagiarism for you to simply come and to copy this and of course the same applies to the exemplars provided on the IBO's teacher support material website where they have presented uh, many exemplars just like this one here to guide students but this particular one is not the property of the IBO and the advice that I'm about to give you is not in any way connected to the IB, but of course it's based on my many years of experience working with students, comparing my marking to those of the IB. And as I give these marks, if you would like to follow along and use it for guidance, you can bear in mind that no two examiners who look at your work would necessarily agree exactly every time. So the IB has a system of tolerance and when I look at my work uh, and put it up against IB system of tolerance I would say generally that my marks fall in tolerance 90% of the time and especially for when you have a good exemplar like this one it's less likely for teachers to defer in how they mark the sample. But let's move in now and take a look at how the marks are assigned for this particular IA sample and what do you have to use as a student as you prepare your final document for submission to your teacher and then to the IBO. So this particular sample is entitled Investigating the Effect of the Concentration of Lead Deposition uh, in the growth of Vijna radiata. So while it could be connected a lot to biology, the growth of uh, and germination of seeds, it's also linked here to the environmental issue of lead deposition, making it uh, a relevant topic to start with. Now, 
as we go through the first section of this report, I will be using the IB's internal assessment criteria here to guide me. In ESS, we begin by identifying the context, CXT, which has got a score out of 6. What do we look for? For a candidate to score in the top, well, states a relevant research question, a coherent one, a focused one, discusses a relevant environmental issue, and explains the connections between the environmental issue and the research question. So, let's see if our student here has done some of that or all of it. First of all, with respect to the research question, how do different concentrations of lead, and the concentration range is listed here, lead acetate, deposited in soil, affect vagina radiatus, sprout, and root growth? So, it's clear that this research question is not actually mentioning anything about lead pollution or lead deposition, because it's not really assessing that now, is it? It's specifically doing just what it says here. Taking lead acetate, varying its concentration, that's your independent variable, and measuring how it would impact the growth of the mung bean vagina radiata with respect to both its sprout and its root. So very clear what the candidate is doing here. This is indeed a, a very good example of a focused research question. So states a relevant, coherent and focused research question. Definitely that is done. So that matches the six out of six mark band. But of course to score a six out of six or a five out of six, the candidate must match all of these descriptors very strongly and then the examiner decides well is it really a six or maybe I should go with a five because perhaps one of them is not that strong so let's see what we have with the discussion and the explanation and here you can look at this and you would see the candidate sets a very good context talking about lead deposition in the country of residence and how it's an issue because of anthropogenic causes. So definitely engaging here in a discussion and here engaging in something of an explanation because it accounts for more than 49% of health risks, lead deposits in plant roots and shoots show physiological changes to inhibit lead from entering the plant with an appropriate citation. So very much of a good, if not an excellent, context for this um, investigation. So, I would score this as a 5 out of 6. Now, let's look at the planning. And again, it's always good to look first at the highest descriptors for each criterion, because that's where you want to aim for. Designing a repeatable method, justifying the sample, the sampling uh, strategy and describing a risk assessment. So it's very easy to see here if you take a look that the candidate has taken the time to really go through in detail and consider all of the controlled variables, making it clear what the independent and dependent variables are, and listing equipment, listing useful and easy to follow steps for carrying out and repeating a similar type of investigation. Whether you want to use Vigna Radiata, you want to use something else, you can model another investigation after this one successfully because of all of this information here that's provided. One photo that is relevant, it shows the layout of the experiment and some of the results emerging here. And of course, a relevant risk assessment is included. Where is one component though? Where is this component about justifying the sampling strategy? Why choose vig Vigna radiata? Why choose lead acetate? Some of that is included here. And some mention of why lead acetate might have been used is mentioned up here in the context or in the background, but there's no explicit explanation as to why this 
sampling strategy or this procedure was used and that despite how detailed this planning is would place this again not at a six definitely at a five and again possibly at a four it is debatable as to whether you would give this a five or a four but given how much detail there is in the design and the description with a very good risk assessment and everything I would again go with a five for this section five out of six for planning and five out of six for the context then the next section is the all-important results section and of course you could see the candidate taking the time to lay out a very nice table that's easy to follow missing here of course is the uncertainty in this raw data table what unit we have here not included the uncertainty is missing uh, some qualitative and relevant qualitative data about the experiment is included which is good details of the processing of the data some of that is included a knowledge of uncertainty is presented and it's presented in the correct way with the candidate having the stated uncertainty consistent with the number of decimal places or significant figures here one two decimal places here and the uncertainty stated as half of this second last digit which is correct units included uh, goes on to use standard deviation based on five samples goes on to use the mean uh, talk about the r squared value use a pretty advanced test called the analysis of variance the ANOVA test carries out the test mathematically correct but whether or not that test or the standard deviation applies with these limited samples is of course questionable and goes about carrying out the test talking about this, the various uh, statistical outputs correctly and again if we look at the results analysis and conclusion section here the RAC we can see that the candidate certainly has constructed lots of good easy to follow graphs charts diagrams whatever has certainly analyzed all of these quite well and has gone on to interpret a lot of the trends very well also here down going down into this section that's labeled the conclusion and of course interpretation of the data here so again just that one small blemish um, of not including the uncertainty in one place a valid conclusion to the research question could be had the data is analyzed correctly and completely although of course you could question whether the standard deviation is valid if there are enough trials if there are enough data points for that and if there are enough data points for the analysis of variance test that of course is quite advanced way beyond our ESS guide so to penalize that heavily is not appropriate but it's appropriate I think therefore to give the candidate another five out of six and then we get to the discussion and evaluation section and here we see that strengths and weaknesses of the investigation has uh, they have been um, considered the candidate here does show this awareness about the limitations of these statistical tests and that is important um, to note doesn't go in though to any kind of significant modification of the experiment or extension for research or other applications and that is uh, a major shortcoming here doesn't suggest any kind of modification or very much at all does discuss or perhaps describe some of the strengths and weaknesses does evaluate the, co the, the conclusion in the context of the environmental issue here five samples some strengths and weaknesses and it's possible that this might be given a three but I think because of the awareness of the statistical test and its limitations that was a pretty high level evaluation I would lean towards a four in this section so 
that is for the discussion and evaluation which certainly is left uh, this part not probably uh, done and the discussion not fully done as well so that's why I've moved to this uh, mark band here where the student has suggested a little bit of a modification uh, described some strengths and weaknesses and evaluated the conclusion but there are some omissions so a good descriptor uh, of uh, for that this this description fits the four three to four band and I've given it a four so finally we look at applications and solutions and here the candidate has talked about uh, the real-world context but hasn't really gone into discussing a solution has talked about a couple of points uh, of concern describing uh, one potential application looking at some strengths and weaknesses but not really evaluating it so describing some issues describing some strengths and weaknesses definitely not in this three mark ban there's not enough of an evaluation here of applications and solutions and um, a two would be a good descriptor for this communication throughout this report of course is excellent it's it's well organized and easy to follow so it would score a three pretty easily so three plus two is five plus four nine plus five fourteen plus five nineteen plus another five twenty four that would give this report uh, in this a score of 24 which is in the seven mark band for ESS IAs and of course this candidate who wrote the exam several years ago did in fact score a seven in fact the candidate also scored a six in HL biology and a six in HL chemistry going on to score 41 in the IB diploma but again I want to caution you that this particular IA is not to be used as is to submit to your teacher because it would constitute academic dishonesty and would mean that your IB diploma could be revoked.